that's where I'm going to leave it at. If you wanted to go up or go down, at that point, what you would do is you would need an assortment of base gaskets, and you would have to remove the cylinder, change your base gasket up or down, depending on what you wanted to get at, and bolt it all back up, and then recheck your squish. So for us, 0.6 is pretty good. Usually when you have an unmodified motor, a stock crankcase, a stock cylinder, um, there's not really a whole lot to check. You're almost assured that you're going to get it right on using a, a, a stock base gasket. If you're using a one millimeter or two millimeter stroker crank, you definitely need to check the squish. But for us, we're dead on. We're going to leave it at that and move on. At this point in our assembly, it's time to start uh, installing some of the peripheral parts of the motor. Uh, mainly what we're going to do is we're going to install a flywheel and after that we'll get to the clutch. The first thing to do with your flywheel is to give it a good inspection. Everything should be inspected all along the, the, the way. And one thing we're looking for are broken fins, uh, any kind of damage that might signify that something's going on with the crank uh, versus the crank shaft and, and its alignment to each other. This also has a few scratches in it that have probably means that either the coil has slipped down or just something's gotten in there. They're not deep, it's more of like a polish mark, so that's not something to worry about. The broken fin, that's something that you need to kind of take into consideration. With just one fin and a small crack out of it, it's probably not going to affect anything. Um, I would actually choose to continue using this for now. So with this guy, uh, we need to make sure that we have it lined up properly. It's really easy to do because there's already a mark for a half moon key in there, a woodruff key. We still have our woodruff key. It's still in good shape. So it just gets slipped right in there. You can see it sits in there nice and neat. And then at that point, we're just going to slide our flywheel right on, making sure that the woodruff key in the slot lines up. And sure enough, it does. Kind of push it in there by hand. Then what we're going to do is take our flanged bolt and install that. We're just going to snug that up by hand. Then the way I prefer to tighten this guy up is to put the socket in there, go get our flywheel puller, take the center piece out, lock this guy down to our flywheel, and then that way we're turning against the tool and not any part of the motor. And put that in there and you want to just snug it up and we're set. Remove the tool, and we're good to go on that. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you check all your clearances from the fins to the case and the cylinder, make sure that's not interfering. Uh, it is possible, if you just continue to crank on this and crank on this, that you can actually push that so far in, it'll uh, come in contact with the case. Uh, but generally, a good snug hand tight will do the trick and you won't have any interference. It's just something that you need to double check. Now that we've got our flywheel put back on, we'll go ahead and we'll install the clutch. First thing we need to do, of course, is put the clutch housing on. That's going to fit right in place. And, of course, with that, we'll need the bolts to put that in place. Now we're going to use a little bit of blue Loctite on these guys. So we'll get a little blue. And install those. All right, and then just in a cross pattern, tighten them all down. Make sure everything's seated nice and neatly. Okay, now that our housing is on, we can actually put our clutch on. So we will need our clutch carrier. 
our clutch pads, and all the clutch hardware. So first thing, we will take our <coughs> clutch housing. Remember this is going onto a taper fit. Put it in place. Get that snug down. And at this point, really our only options to get this tight is to either put our flywheel puller on the back side to hold it in place, or we can go back to our, our piston stop, and that's actually what we're going to do on this one. Screw our piston stop in. Rotate this slowly until it makes contact, because you don't want to go banging that in there. And then tighten that guy down good and snug and we're set. At that point, time to put our clutch on. Remember that with the clutch bolts, we have three pieces. You have the actual shoulder bolt, you've got a small wave washer, and a, a flat washer. The flat washers go below the clutch, so we're going to line those up. Then we're going to put our clutch on top of that. Then we're going to drop one of the wave washers onto one of the shoulder bolts. We'll just get that started so nothing can fly away. And then I'm going to actually pull the clutch up so I know that the wave washers and everything lines up. Get the right Allen wrench. We'll take turns going back and forth getting these down so they don't bind up on the shoulder. And again, making sure the piston's up already making contact. We're going to wrench these down as tight as we can get them. There's another spot that some blue Loctite definitely helps. And that's it. The clutch is in place. And we're pretty much ready to go. And there's no reason to have our piston stop in there anymore. So we'll take that out. And our engine is essentially done. It's just putting all the peripheral parts on. The case covers, the pull start, uh, the coil, which is what we'll work on next. And then the intake and the carburetor.